Joe Lopresti, the father to Francesco. Welcome to Let's Talk. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So you, for <laughs> me, you navigate and everything that goes on is all in here. The goal for me today is to get it from in here and out because I want to know what's been going on through your head. I want to know who Joe Lopresti really is. I do want to say as well that it's just been such an honor to be a part of this family. Um, just being in the house and seeing what like a father is like and just really experiencing a full family and just a beautiful home. So I just want to say thank you for letting me in. No, thank you for being part of us. Of course. So you already know where we're going to go. Where? We're, we're going to go in. We get deep on the show. Mm -hmm. So you ready? I guess, yeah. I have right. to be ready. Young Francesco. I want to know a little bit more of what that looked like. What kind of kid was he? What was his spiel? What did he love to do? Do you have any favorite memories with him? Oh, there's uh, lots of them. There's so many that, that he was just a, a wild, crazy guy. I guess <laughs> the only way it's cra just a crazy kid. Yeah, he would be in the middle of everything. He would be bouncing off the walls. He would energetic chaos. Uh, unbelievable. I mean, he had us up the first eight months of his life because he had his time backwards. So imagine what that's got to be like. So you're saying he was up all night? So he started as soon as he. <laughs> Got it. Out, basically. He was like a party animal like, yeah. as a kid? Yeah, it was just, uh, that's why it was, maybe he was born on the weekend. Yeah. He was actually on a Saturday. Wow. That just all makes sense then. Mm -hmm. So he did a lot of activity yes. when he was younger. Yeah, growing up. Right? So what was like his favorite activity that you guys put him in? Um, what did you say? We introduced him to everything. I yeah. mean, as a young boy, um, the baseball, the soccer, but I think the really the thing that got him was the taekwondo. Mm, that's what he loved to do. Because it was like a lot of, um, a lot of fighting, I guess. You know, a lot of movements, yeah. a lot of energy, which he had. Yeah. So true. You know, just basically, and he grew with that. You yeah. Know, until he was older. Did you like enjoy going to his shows? It was great. Yeah. Yeah. And his younger brother did it. Yeah. Right. Then he got him into it. And, uh, and they, they both did well. I mean, there's yeah. so many trophies that he's gotten over the years. His performances. Um, I remember. In the city, mm. you know. We went to Times Square one time. Yeah, yeah. And I watched him break bricks with his head. And I was like, this is um, a disturbing sport. <laughs> or whatever it was. But then I realized, I was like, wait, this is actually kind of cool. I feel safe with this guy. No, this is no. awesome. <laughs> everything and everything. He, you know, you saw he was bouncing. Yeah. He was jumping uh, over people's heads. All I mean, over I never thought he would achieve that much. Yeah. I remember know? actually, too, he was telling me that they wanted him to, like, open up his own Taekwondo studio at a yeah. point. They were willing to give him, a, you know, his own dojo. Then somehow someone got in the middle of things. <laughs> and... <laughs> we're going to get into that right now. <laughs> I'm so glad you brought that up. But before we go there, he also, I want to talk a little bit about his L.A. time. So he was into modeling and stuff. Yes, we actually, okay. um, we brought him to, uh, I remember this, it was John Robert Powers okay. in the city. Okay. And, you know, we brought him there because he said he wanted to do modeling or yeah. acting, whatever. Yeah. So, you know, I said, of course, as a parent, you give him... Everything. You introduce him to whatever they want to do because you never know what's really going to click Stick, with them. Yeah. You know, so we did that for a while. And then, you know, he was going to classes. And then there was, uh, they organized a trip for everybody to go to California they did the runway mm. thing. They did a short, you know, entertainment, um, a play. Mm. They did a dance. Did he like it? Oh, he loved it. He was lucky. You know, every, like, he like he loved being center of attention. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Well, I'm wondering if that's where his conspiracy of being Justin Bieber's cousin came into play. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was that like... could be. You know me. I'm, I'm Justin Bieber's cousin. <laughs> and I fell for it because he looks, he looked a lot like Justin Bieber. So. Yeah, at that time, yeah, because <laughs> that was the hot thing at the time. Yeah, he did uh, a lot of people. Yeah. You know, they used to take like double glance like we were in the car. Yeah. Like, you know, the, the, was that him? Was well, like... one time I took him to the city to stalk Justin Bieber. 
at one of his hotels and when I walked up to like wait at the hotel everybody thought he was Justin Bieber they were taking pictures with him I'm like it's not him <laughs> it's the, the, the guys in the hotel not him I was getting all jealous just to look alike yeah just yeah. to look alike <laughs> so he took advantage and he ran with it oh he was so happy you like know. you said center of attention oh, <laughs> that's always him he's always been the most I think of course memorable moment that I know that Francesco Gold did when he was younger was Diva Dance Studio now, that was another thing yeah and the that break. is where uh, I came into play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's where everything got turned upside <laughs> down. Yes. Turned upside down. That's correct. But, but you but. took him out of dance studio. He had to leave. Well, and I guess he didn't have good grades in school, was it? I think he was, he was telling me. He was kind of slacking, yeah, and okay. this and that. You know, so as a parent, you know, you try to give him a little bit of discipline. Yeah. You know, try to do well, then we'll reward you with something. Right. You know? It's the old mentality. Of course. I know. But unfortunately, no. that's what was given to me. So, you so gave it to him. projected off. Yeah. And um, so we took him out. You know, I didn't want to do it, but. <laughs> Did know. he like it? I, like I said, as long as he was center, <laughs> it didn't matter where you put him. Right. He was know? happy. He was, you know, I he, I think he enjoyed it. He liked he yeah. he liked dancing, and again, it was very acrobatic. Mm -hmm. You know, he was flexible, so they just. Yeah. He well, would go with it. When you took him out of dance, you didn't know this. But you broke a ballerina's heart. Mm, well, I didn't, <laughs> yeah, I guess I didn't know, but <laughs> but we refound each other. It was destiny. It was destiny. Yeah. When at the time that him and I kind of came back together, he was in Taekwondo, yes. which goes back to your point of mm. who got in the way of it because <laughs> I lived around the corner, and you know, you'd have class. You'd say, you know what? I'll come to your house. We'll hang out. Yeah. Next thing you know, we missed like ten classes. <laughs> Not good. Yeah. No, well, that's <laughs> that's what happened, you know. I guess his mind went to a different direction. So, but do you remember the first time you met me? Uh, it was a while I ago. I believe so. I mean, I think it was at Taekwondo, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Right, because yeah, you either you came up or you happened to be there when we went there yeah. to pick him up and. He well, he was. Me. Uh, I w I was there, and then we like met, and he was like, "Oh, like my parents can drive you home if you want." I'm like, "Oh." no I was so scared and he's like no 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 come on you gotta come in so I go in the car you guys and I'm like uh do you remember that car ride so long ago uh, no not really no. I can't say why did something no I was just oh. so like nervous I was like oh my god like I'm in the <laughs> car with them and I remember sending him a text and I'm like did they like me and he's like yeah they loved you <laughs> and then I would start coming over and that was when Rosa cooked me some French onion soup because she knew I loved the soup um, you know, I started to spend some time there and do you remember like the younger version of Francesco yeah. and I, 15, of 16? Course, yeah. Do you remember how many times you had to wait outside? Yeah, yeah practically every night. <laughs> so you guys, Francesco would come to my house every day when I would get out of school and his dad would come and pick him up around eight, nine o'clock. And when his dad would text him and say, I'm here, come outside. He would say, yeah, he could wait. Nice half hour. How long would you wait every day? Oh, forget it. A half hour to an hour. Sometimes I would leave. <laughs> I remember that. I would leave. He would text me, be like, get home yourself. <laughs> and then he's like, he's definitely around the corner somewhere hiding. And then like, you just swing around. It's like, I knew it. Yeah, because I couldn't just, I couldn't do it. I tried. <laughs> you tried. I tried being You made yourself like, like that, three but... blocks down. And you're like, ah, gotta go get no. this guy. Because then I wouldn't be at ease, you know. I just gotta, you know, I gotta get him home. So then I think to myself god forbid something happens it's gonna be on my conscience yeah so i can't have that well overall i just he would always be like i'm gonna take you out on a date tonight and i'm like oh, okay like how are we getting here he's like, i got a guy who wasn't you <laughs> it was me, yeah. <laughs> Drive to movie theaters. <laughs> so thank you for being our uh Chauffeur. very cheap uber no, listen I told, <laughs> i've always told both my kids you need me anytime anywhere i'm there so you guys have a very, you have a system, right? I feel like you guys are very culture-based. You guys are Italian. And by the way, this is something that is very common in all different cultures. Everybody has their certain ways of doing things. Right. I had a very hard time understanding that because I wasn't in the same culture with you. Yeah. And I felt like, and you could correct me if I'm wrong, that at the time, me not being full Italian was kind of like a concern. It was kind of like, what are you going to do? Like, she doesn't understand how we do things. It was a concern, but I'm saying, you know what? They're young. 
puppy love. I don't know, yeah. whatever, you know. So you come and go. You right. Know? But as we got older, years kept going by. You're like, hey, they're getting a little older. What are we going to do here? <laughs> but I was learning and growing as we were going. But I feel like when we want people to function a certain way, sometimes we get stuck in that. And sometimes we miss out on who they really are because we're like, well, they're not doing this, but then we can't see that they're doing that. Right. I used to get so sad. But I also really learned a lot, and I think that Francesco and I taught each other a lot, and we kind of found this middle point where we were able to make it work. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that as well? Yeah, I think so. Because like you said, you had, you know, it's two different upbringings. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he, like you said, he had the yeah. Italian culture, you know, the way I was brought up. And it's not as bad as it was yeah. when I was coming up. Right. You know, I mean, we were, we were a little bit more, we definitely were more lenient than my parents were. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's like, there was no way a girl was staying at my house. Right. I couldn't do it. I mean, yeah. I, I didn't even bring girls to my house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because my father's like, these things you keep outside. Yeah. You're going to bring the one that you marry. That's about it. Right. Well, he definitely pushed buttons with you guys. Oh, forget it. <laughs> he, he was like, oh, you're not okay with this? If I keep <laughs> just doing it, eventually they'll be okay with it. He would always get his way. <laughs> no matter what, he would finagle it and swing it. Even at a young age. Oh, forget it. He, <laughs> he didn't know no, what no meant. What's no? Like, it doesn't exist. Yeah. No matter what I said, even if I got loud with him, he's like, yeah, whatever, you'll get over it, you know? Yeah. And he, he would get his way. Yeah. Because then he would smooth talk you. Oh. Oh. He was, <laughs> I don't know who he got that from. Somebody in that house taught him how to smooth their way through. And I want to think it's you. Are you the culprit? It may be, it might be, man. yeah, because I had a... I'm going to have to check with your wife after this and see what she thinks. Well, you know, I, I had my rep when I was younger, obviously. <laughs> no, he was, but... like, so good with getting his way. But there was, like, almost something that was, like, you can't say no because he was, like, so... He was, like, a con artist, but, like, a charismatic, like, he meant... Like, he really, like, meant well. Like, he just, like, made everything that may not work out, like, sound like it's going to really work out and it, like, did... Yeah. I can't explain yeah, it. I know. Like, yeah, it's crazy. He just like had his way. He would just work with it. And, you know, he would twist it and bend it and mold it in the way. Yeah. This is the way it's going to come out. And it did. And it did. Even though we, you know, you would fight about it and this and that. And yeah. Just, he's like, see, I told you everything's good. Yeah. But still aggravate you at the same time. Right. You know. Absolutely. <laughs> Do you feel that now that you saw, you know, Francesco and I kind of find that middle point that it's opened your mind to be more open-minded to cultures maybe mixing and like working it can happen yeah if it's true love it doesn't matter mm. at that point yeah so, absolutely because love all conquers all how would you say that you know when something like true love as like an adult i saw the way he was towards you yeah he just you know breathed your air mm. he just every day it was just like something that he was vibrant about yeah glowing whatever however you want to describe it yeah but he's there was something that triggered yeah and you know he had plenty of shares of you know even though he was young he had a lot of friends that were girls true but uh you know there's always that one yeah and i guess you were it well i'm just so glad that we had so much time together and that i i always felt like i couldn't entirely show you who i was because like there was like this barrier because i wasn't able to like completely understand the culture mm -hmm. and i feel like now you see me entirely for who i am with everything that we've gone through and i'm just really happy that we finally got to get to a position where like i'm just like completely myself with you yeah. and i'm just grateful for that i'm well, really glad we got there it took us you know it took us time because you know like i said our culture is very knit yeah family you right. know we're close and right. of course you saw that absolutely so if you were willing to be part of that Obviously, yeah. we accepted you. Yeah. Well, it's funny, too, because then when he would come to my house, my mom's like, we're going to have tacos tonight. He's like, oh, he's just like, not pasta. Let's yeah. go. So it was nice because we both kind of got to live those different moments. And it really just created this beautiful balance that I'm just so grateful for. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was definitely, uh, it was definitely good. Because like you said, we wouldn't do that. You know, you tell her, mom, make tacos, make something different. She's like, no, all the pasta's ready. <laughs> you know? So I go to college, right? And that was already a big, I actually remember saying to you guys, like, hey, I'm going to go away. And, yeah, I know. you know, I think, especially now, as, as I look back at 25, 
for two young kids trying to do that long distance, I think maybe, and you can tell me what you think, but it was kind of just like, I don't know what's going to happen here. You didn't know, really. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I was probably thinking that probably was going to not happen. Mm-hmm. You know, because you're out. It's, it's a long distance relationship. It can happen. Yeah, and especially like being in college. Right. I mean, you know, you're, it's a whole different whole world. Different you know, world. you're in you're in your world, and then he's not part of it. Right. And so, does he sit back and just hang out, or does he just, hey, whatever? It's not working. Yeah. You know, so he just. Well, we ended up breaking up. It didn't work, which I explained to them our whole story. And while we're separated, Francesco gets sick. I have so many questions as to how the dynamic of your house changed as you guys kind of had this whole new world happen, like everything just went upside down. I think a lot of us fear cancer. It's like Mm -hmm. a, a scary thing. And what was Francesco feeling that was giving symptoms of being very sick? Well, do you remember those first moments of him complaining like hey i need to go to the doctor how did how can people catch that they need to be checked out well in his situation it's not that he was you know feeling sick or just he just had a it began with being having a discomfort so you know you obviously you have it checked out and uh you know it's tell you it was straining because he you know he looked really good he was fit i mean he was working out so they kind of blamed everything on the weightlifting. Right. Who's know? the doctors? Yeah. Okay. But, um... So he's in pain. He goes to the doctors and they say, hey, like, you know, it's probably the weight that you're lifting. Right. So he goes to the gym and he's like, okay, I'm not going to lift as heavy. And he's still feeling this pain. Yeah. Yeah. And then it was, what, in his back? He was just feeling all over discomfort? No, it just started, you okay. know, again. Down there. And, uh... But it was like... He was kind of like, okay, he was he had a discomfort, but he was just living life anyway. Right, okay. Um, as a matter of fact, he still went to Italy. Right, with this discomfort. With his discomfort. You know? So we didn't think it was like that serious if he's able to function. And that's why cancer, I feel like, could be really tricky. Yeah, yeah, it was really tricky. Mm-hmm. Maybe, you know, if, maybe if we wouldn't have gone or we would have stopped the vacation on him. But again, you know, you just, you don't think, you never think Worst that case that would have. Worst like that. Because it's like, we never really had it in the family or anything like that. Right, okay. No, we never had any kind of problems. Gotcha. You know, everybody was. The last thing on your mind was cancer. Yeah, but, uh, you know, you would never figure. So he comes home from Italy and then he's still feeling this discomfort. So you guys take him into the doctors. Mm-hmm. And what, what happened differently this time to get you guys to the point to know that this is cancer? <laughs> Well, when he came back, then it was wasn't just that. It, then they, we started feeling um, back pain. So now we're trying to address this, mm. and the doctors still couldn't pinpoint f- pinpoint you know what it was. They were telling him it's the it's the straining, uh, it's the mattress, it's um, you know everything but gotcha what what it was gotcha. So, so how did we finally get to the point of like let's let's go deeper than just the the surface level. Let's get a scan or let's well, obviously, because we had to take him out of his doctor that he mm. was seeing. Okay. Because wasn't, we weren't getting any gotcha. answers. Gotcha. Gotcha. And we wound up taking to our own personal doctor. Okay. Because, again, at the time, he was still a minor, so he was still going to pediatrics? pediatrics. Gotcha. But at that point, we said, you know, enough is enough. We went to our family doctor, and then um, they ordered a CAT scan and this and that, and that's when we got the news. So you get the news. Okay. My wife actually got the news over the phone. Hmm. Okay. And how did you find out? She came to you in person and said. Well, I I mean, I, it was funny because we, me and Francesco, were helping out a neighbor, moving some sheetrock. Okay. And I see her hysterical in the car. Okay. So like I'm, you know, what's going on? So I get in the car and, and I'm hearing this, this and that, and then, that's how we found out. I mean, that's how I found out because. She, the doctor was still on the phone, hmm. telling her what the this, this and that, and we were just devastated. We just, you know. How did you tell Francesco? I don't remember. Hmm. You know, it's like a blur. Yeah, it was. Uh, honestly, I, 
I guess we gotta just tell them that you know, this is it. We gotta do something mm. about it quick. Do you feel that you approached it in a way of we're concerned, like this is a problem, or did you, you know, make the executive decision as parents to say we're gonna tell them what it is, but let's approach it in a way where like, hey, this is fixable. Like, do you feel like you were already on like this mode of like, we're not gonna we're gonna show him you know strength from the beginning. Yeah, I mean, we we took control right away when okay. we got calls were being made and uh, things were getting set up with the doctors and operations and, you know, everything in one week, basically, you know, just because the faster you removed it, mm. the more of a chance of surviving it. Gotcha. But what they didn't know at the time that that pain in the back was already spread because it was too late down the line mm. when we found so out. So the doctors didn't catch it in time. They didn't know. And either. that's why the cancer got so bad? Yeah, because it started spreading. Okay. Because once cancer goes through lymph nodes, then it's now it's traveling. Mm, it's it's traveling. no longer. If they would have caught it on time, you know, even through a blood test or a sonogram or uh, other methods that they use, or even a simple blood test, if they would have analyzed it right, it should have been a red flag, knowing that the um, the counts were offset. Right. But I guess nobody picked. You know the. His doctor didn't pick up on it. Right. His pediatric. Well, we talk a lot in the beginning how he was a very energetic kid and he always wanted to be the center of attention. When he got this news and started the battle, this experience, did that change? Did it change his character? Did it change who he was? It didn't really change him. I mean, he, he accepted it and he said, you know, he says, you know, of course we encourage him. I said, don't worry, we're going to get through this. So, but to us, it was still bad concern because you know just the word cancer alone just makes you crawl under a rock yeah knowing from other people's experience do you think that and i don't know if it was when he was younger but i think i remember you guys telling me that there would be nights where he would like sleep with you guys mm -hmm. because like he was kind of maybe fearing yeah he would have you know he would his motions would fluctuate mm -hmm. you know there'd so. be days you'd see him suffering with it a little bit you know but he didn't, make, he didn't show it. He didn't show it too much. You yeah. know, he was more, he's always concerned about other people than himself. So he would always hide him, his motions from us, not to make us, you know, more than what we are. Right. So we would try to, you know, just have a, a normal lifestyle. Do you think that you were able to like kind of see past that mask that he was mentally, you know, worried and going through it? He, you know, he was a strong kid. He was, he a, was. He was a strong young man, and uh, he tackled anything. So it was kind of hard to tell, but obviously he was going to be. Of course, he was, you know, concerned himself, but he didn't show it as much. Yeah. What were some of the things that you guys were doing in the house? Because I know he was doing chemo, but chemo destroys the body, and I know you guys were working at home when he would come home from chemo to rebuild the body. Do you yeah. remember some of the things to give people out there that maybe also are battling out cancer that mm -hmm. you would suggest that kind of help put them back together? Sure. I mean, um, we started juicing a lot and, you know, we would constantly, you know, with the right stuff where we were being guided from people that um, know about these juices yeah, that you like mix together. Research. And, you know, so because we were... Uh, like fish out of water. We we had Didn't no know. idea what to do, but we were doing things like juicing with, I mean, every um, carrots, kale, um, green apples. You know, a lot of a lot of that, and that actually helped him out. You know, when he was going through that, um, especially after chemo. Hmm. I noticed that you brought up the fact that the doctor, you know, didn't catch it. Do you feel that you hold anger in your heart right now towards that doctor that didn't catch it in time? Well, yeah, obviously I do have anger towards him. Um, and if he wasn't, you know, he could have said, listen, I can't figure it out. Or maybe say, you know, why don't you go see someone else instead of making so much time go by. So you gave this thing enough time to grow right. and move, you know? Yeah. So he could have been honest, you know, he could have said, listen, you need to go to a specialist. I can't see nothing wrong with him. Right. You know, the, he looks great. He looks fit. Okay, he has this, but gotcha. I would have moved on. You know, we would have tried to speed up things. Well, I think that you, 
you know, you guys as a family have really learned from this experience. And I want to just make sure that I articulate what you guys learn so other people learn. Now it's, you know, when you are feeling sick and you feel like maybe like a doctor isn't able to, you know, figure out what it is, like to take that extra step and say, you know what, I'll go get another second opinion just to see oh, and, and be more proactive of, you know, if you don't feel good and someone's saying like, hey, I don't see something wrong, but you still don't feel good to take that that step and say, you know what, I'll go see someone else and see oh, just yeah. in case and get that second opinion. Of course, absolutely. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't even hesitate. Yeah. If you feel like the doctor's not telling you what you want to hear, then just move on. Yeah. Because, you know, they're just, they're people like us, right. even though they study, they're, but they're not God. Right. You know, they do make mistakes. They're... Right. So the good news is Francesco went into remission at that right. time or very close to remission. I know his mm -hmm. numbers like dropped completely where he can go back to a, a normal Somewhat, life. Somewhat, yeah. yeah when that happened, like, where was everybody at? Was everybody just excited? And... Of course. We, you know, we figured, okay, we got this. You know, we beat it. Now we just have to you know, reinforce him again, right. you know, build him up. Because it's a change of life, right? Once you get it that first time, I mean, forever, this, you got to kind of watch what you eat and yeah. take your vitamins and it's a complete, complete change. Every, yeah, everything. You got it. Yeah. Were you scared that it was going to come back? I I didn't think it was going to come back. Okay. I thought we were at a good point. Okay. You no. Know? So, um, you know, we try to do what we can, but you know, he would always cheat here and there. Of course, I wouldn't see it because... You know, I couldn't like cheat on foods, yeah, like certain you know? things you'd snack on. Right, exactly. Yeah, you well, know, like we said, you know, definitely stay away from sugar because that triggers everything off. Yeah. But you know, you're a young man. You know, you know what I'm saying. Right. It's hard to. So now, in your mind, you're okay. You, you know, you're good. Now you just got to build yourself up. So eh, I, I got this. I'm, you know. Yeah. So. I remember you were telling you guys have told me many times that when he got into remission, and you know, you guys obviously recognized the life that he was living, being so sick, you guys kind of felt like you wanted to just give him the world. So what is it What is it that you want? You want a dog? You want a car? You just started just kind of like, would you say, spoiling him? Was that your way of like, almost yeah. like feeling... Making him happy. You yeah. Know? Give him something to look forward to. You know, give him whatever. Whatever happiness we could have gave him. Right. We did. I don't think we were doing anything wrong. We were just trying to build up his spirits yeah. and everything else, you know? Yeah. Do you think it helped? Like having that... I mean, he loved the dog. Yeah, just no, everything. I, I, I think it did help. Yeah. yeah, it did. Brought a lot of comfort to him. Good. You know, yeah. even us now, even though he's a pain, but he's still good. <laughs> the dog. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I come home from college, and somehow us two, the two bozo the clowns, they find each other again. All of a sudden, you, your son's a TikTok star. You go into the bread store. You got the girl saying, aren't you the father to the famous kid, Francesco? Life changes. You're like, what the hell is going on? What were you thinking about this whole, what was your first reaction to finding out we're making these videos online? I mean, he would come home and tell me about it. But, you know, again, I would encourage him. But I really didn't, you know, I was like, all right, whatever. You, you know, you like it, you enjoy it, but you still got to go to work. You got to right. get a job. Right. You got to get a career. You didn't understand. You like, this get could something. be a career. Yeah. And yeah. he's telling me, no, but dad, this, you this don't is understand. This is my career. With this, you don't know how what I can do or this and that. I'm like, okay, I didn't I didn't know. I yeah. thought, you know, I didn't blow him off, but I was, I was like, okay, right. whatever. Do what you want to do. Whatever you want to do. If you're having fun, go ahead. You know, but then it's like, okay, what do you want to do? Do you want to go to college? You right. want to study? You want to get a job? You want me to <laughs> You go? kept saying, I get you doing TikTok, but do you want a job? <laughs> but dad, I'm doing TikTok. Okay, but hey, the job's still here if you want it, you know? Yeah, it's like, all right, you could do TikTok on your spare time. <laughs> He's like, you're not understanding, dad. This is all I do. <laughs> um, do you yeah. feel that as, you know, you kind of watch the both of us doing this job and you're like, what the hell is going on? You started to... Watch your son, like, kind of find his purpose? Actually, I realized that, you know, a little bit later because it took yeah, me a while to understand it and accept whatever it was. Right. Because it was all new. Right. Well, you guys knew that. I was behind the scenes of this. So you're like, what the, this girl gets back together with him. He's online. What the hell is going yeah, on? It was, it's just, yeah, it was crazy. It was like, we didn't know. We didn't know what the hell was going <laughs> So, but uh, then you realize that I'm like, I can't believe this, you know? Yeah. He's actually, you know, doing these things and 
people love it. You know, it's uh, making everybody laugh. Yeah. And, like I remember, said, quiet on the set. You guys are like downstairs uh, trying to like get home from work. You're like cleaning <laughs> dishes. He's like, I'm filming. You guys are like, excuse me. I know, <laughs> Mr. Like, <"What?"> Hollywood <laughs> up there. And I think it's so ironic too. And that's why I wanted you to, you know, bring up his younger years of going to LA. And it's almost like, you know, yeah. he found that in himself again because True. he loved it. Yeah. At first he was like, oh no, am I corny for this? And then all of a sudden he's like, Caitlin, here's the schedule for next week. These are the videos we're going to do. I'm like, okay, go off. But then we we both decided that we were going to share not only just funny moments and pranking each other, but sharing like what he's really going through and like who he is and what he experienced. Right, and, right. you know, you guys were always very, of course, correct me if I'm wrong, low key about this. It was not something that many people knew mm-hmm. about Francesco. And all of a sudden, millions of people are now following this idea that Francesco was suffering with this and he was kind of like leading this pack of other people that were sick. Yeah. What were like your thoughts at first of, I know you guys used to say like, don't put your dirty laundry like out there. Like, yeah, is that right, was kind right. of like weird, right? Yeah, because, you know, it's like, you know, it's a it's a private matter, you know, and um, again, these are it's all new things to yeah. us, you know. Right. Yeah, you got you know you're dealing with something in the family. It's just you don't bring it out there. Right. It's like, and then, you know, a million people like following. Like, what's going on? Right. You know. I didn't, then again, that's why I said I didn't realize it how much he had, how powerful yeah, this thing how was. How powerful it could be? And I had no idea. Yeah, and I remember sitting down with Francesco one day, and he's like, "I don't know if I should share this or not." I'm like, you know, I think that that's what makes you you. And I will encourage you to do so. I wanted him to make the decision for himself, but I definitely gave him that push. And I'm just really grateful that, you know, you guys all trusted me with that idea for him and trusted that I had his best interest because he left a legacy behind. Yeah. I mean, he got that street sign because of how many people think about him when they're fighting right now and say, like, you know, he did this. Like, you you know, like, it it really just, you know, even just that prayer before he passed. like. All those people, yeah. Such support. It was, like, so powerful. I I remember, like, his mom was like, we should do a prayer on TikTok Live. And I'm thinking in my head, like, you know, his mom a year ago would have never thought that this was even a thing. And no, look how much, not. like, she found, like, love in this. And, like, this is, like, our power and support. Yeah. We've had so many people sending, like, prayers to the point that I really, truly thought because of, like, the power that we had in this world that like he was going to get that miracle. Yeah, we all did. Actually, we were hoping for that. Yeah, it was it was really uh amazing actually. Yeah, I would never thought that all these people would come around. Yeah. You know, just from a TikTok cuz I thought it was something that you guys were playing with early <laughs> in the, you know, in the days I'm like whatever let Get a job, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. But that's I guess that was the wave of the future and, and I wasn't ready for it. Yeah used to a certain lifestyle of course a certain way you know growing up got like, this girl coming into your house she's <laughs> half italian half american now her son's i'm going to the bread store just trying to be a normal citizen i got people coming up to me what the hell yeah. is going on <laughs> you know we're sitting there whatever <laughs> having dinner and we're, we're hearing screams <laughs> you know so we run upstairs like what are you, and it's like you get you know you're filming it's like dad what the hell what do you mean what way. the hell you know i hear you guys are screaming i don't know what's going on did you get hurt i'm like you okay <laughs> You're just doing skits. It was not. It was crazy. Listen, you had your fair share too. You were like a paid actor on his page as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were good. Yeah. Maybe Listen, that was your like calling. I said, everything I I support him with everything, no matter yeah. what it was. So Joe, he was living this dream with me, and then in 2021 in September, me, you, and his mother drive him to the hospital because he's like, I have this back pain that just won't go away. We're sitting in, and and tell me if you remember, we're sitting in the waiting room, waiting to hear what's going on. He was the only one that was allowed to go in. This was kind of during COVID times. Well, this was during COVID times where everything was super strict and we're waiting and waiting. And finally, the doctors come out to us and say, listen, the cancer's back and it hit his main organs. And that was something that it was in his liver and his lungs. That that was something that in the past when he was younger, that it never got to that point. Mm Mm-hmm. What were your thoughts when you first heard that? I was afraid. I was really, really concerned because now, you know, it wasn't just where it was. Now it's uh, serious. Yeah. Worse than it was. Yeah. So. Was it then that you were like, 
the cancer could take my son. It did cross my mind, yeah. Absolutely. Was it more of like, I'm like scared or it's more like we need to just take action and just do whatever it is we need to do? I mean, I don't know about not being afraid. It was just, I know we we had to react on something. Whatever whatever we could have done, yeah. we would have done. Yeah. No matter what it was, no matter where we had to go or what we had to do. Well, we end up picking up and going to Mexico to try yeah. the holistic approach, which when I look back, I feel like was such a beautiful trip. I think that I really thought it was going to be miserable. Because we're going to cure his cancer. And like, who wants to, he doesn't want to deal with that. I don't want to deal with that. We just want to live our lives and be 24. You know, you don't want to like watch your son go through this. But in the mix of all that, we had a lot of fun on that trip. Yeah. It was, you know, like it was, I, you know, you're like, eh, like, because half the day was him doing his treatments. But at night, like the gym, the dinners, like the walks, like just that time yeah. where you don't have to work and be that guy that like was great. you're kind of programmed to be yeah even just spending time with you guys yeah. you know because you know always like you said always i'm always always at work or whatever and then you guys were running out so you know it was always hit and miss yeah i was busy you guys were busy so that time was it was nice just hanging out were you happy to just be in mexico and are you glad that you went yeah of course i'm glad yeah i wouldn't have uh had it any other way as my it was so hard to leave that time i know right? i know i remember um he was in so much pain in mexico like and that's why we had to leave it got so bad and i remember you just you that, couldn't leave his side you couldn't yeah. sleep like he was up all night like, i know i know i was i kept was, saying like joe like go go downstairs take a walk or go sit by the pool and you're like i just can't leave yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't detach myself. I couldn't. I couldn't stay away from him. No. And it was torture when I left mm -hmm. that day. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was miserable. Yeah, you wanted to stay. Yeah, absolutely, without a doubt. Do you wish you stayed? I was glad when you guys got home. Yeah, we we came home shortly after anyway. I know, but it's, it's that was that that pain in the back that really that was the downfall of the empire basically. Well, when we came home from Mexico, for me, everything was kind of a blur because everything was just happening so quick. Like, we were just trying everything and the cancer just kept moving. Every time we went back in to get, you know, new results, it was just like, oh, it came here now and here. And like, it was just like, we couldn't catch a break. My question to you is, you know, at a certain point, you were like balancing this life of your son is sick at home, but you need to get up every day and go to work. And my question to you is like, what was it like, like putting on a mask and living this double life? You gotta just go like if nothing was going on. But meanwhile, inside you're you're you know, you're burning up. You're you're agitated. You're aggravated. You're angry. You are just everything. Did it affect your work ethic at work? Yeah, it did. It did in the beginning. It definitely mm -hmm. did. I wasn't. You just didn't want to be. There. I wasn't paying attention. Good. I was just. I really didn't care. You know. I was. Um, you know they. The guys showed me that I was a little edgy, so they would mm. not question me because they knew. did. They know what was going on, yeah. your yeah, friends or your coworkers. Did you like people? And this is something that I know is very different for everybody's experience. Did you like when people would address it to you and check in to see how you were doing, or you were the type of person where you prefer it not really brought up? No, I mean it was fine. If they asked me, I guess you know their concern. It was nice to see that you, you know, people care. You know, they try to put you at ease in any way they could. Yeah. You know, but your your mind was just somewhere else. Yeah. You know, you couldn't. I feel like we were all kind of just playing this role. Like, yeah, during just... the day, you're working and trying to make money for the house while this is going on. And I'm with Francesco. And then we switch. And I right, go home and right. you come home. And it was like this. We all had this system. Did you expect me to be as involved as I was during this process? No, in the beginning, I didn't. I didn't actually. I didn't. Yeah. And I actually felt bad for you. I said, you know, this young girl, she's got to go through this, you know. But uh, you did. You stuck it out. Do you feel I could have done anything better during the process? There's really nothing much any of us could have done. It's just stay close. It's kind of like you asked that question because it's like I think all of us in a way were like, could we have done more? You know, like we all feel that. We tried like everything possible. We did what we could. What to you know, 
to our limits, obviously, you know, I mean, she was constantly researching things, new things, whatever, whatever we could have thrown at him, we did. Right. But then it got to the, you know, it got to the point which it was no matter what you did. Yeah. And that last thing with the chemo, which I was totally against. Yeah. Because I knew that was trying because he was so weak. Yeah. Yeah, there was a point where like just it came to a point where nothing was working. No, because it was it was already too late. There was a point where Francesco got so sick that he needed to be rushed to the the hospital, and mm -hmm. this was when he was still on the breathing tube and stuff. And we get there in hopes that maybe they can do something, and they tell us like he really doesn't have much left. Like at this point, he's in hospice. Yeah. Was it then that you started, like, where were you at? What were your thoughts when, like, they're telling you, like, hey, like, you have, like, very, you have, like, a week left. Like, that. that's what they told me. They're like, hey, because I went up to them, like, what do I have? And they're like, a week. You know, I don't know if you asked them the same question, but I do know that you were pretty aware that they were saying this to you. And, like, where were you at? I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I know it was just a short time whatever it was going to be and uh, I don't know I just don't know where my mind was I was just just trying to stay as close to him as I could and whatever hope for the best yeah so. well when he came home you guys spent a lot of time together because me and Rosa kind of got the boot a little bit his mother because me and her were like more like you got to take this and take yeah, that and you were more like if you don't want to do anything, like, I'll hang out with you. And you gave him, like, that escape for a little bit. You guys spent a lot of time. And is there anything in particular that you two talked about in your last couple of days that you still, to this day, like, sticks with you, that he gave you? Like, anything that you carry with you that you'd like to share? It won't come out? Um, I don't know. It was just hard. Yeah. Because for me, he was talking to me like in a place of um, acceptance. Like, hey, uh, Caitlin, um, when you're ready to meet me at this sense of uh, consciousness, I just want to enjoy your company. And like, here's the things I want you to know. And I think yeah. we all got that. He was like, hey, like, you know, can you step out of the room? I want to talk to my brother. Hey, can you step out? You know, I want to talk to my father. And he told me so many things that, like, every, you know, I feel like throughout my days, like, they'll just kind of flash. Like, I'll think about. There was just so much that he was so wise. Yeah. He really was. Yeah, he was an old soul. He was an old soul. Is there anything that you want to say on those times that was really special for you? Just being in his presence. Just being there was fine. Yeah. You know? It was, you know, I know he, I tried to be strong for him. And, you know, he didn't want to see anybody crying in the room. So. You did a, I, you did a really you know. good job. <clears throat> I am so proud we of you. We did what we could. There was this one morning that I'll never forget. And it was maybe like two days before he passed away where... You were downstairs in the kitchen and you do this, you have your coffee and then you put the bread in the coffee. You have like a little soup action going on downstairs. Yeah. I still don't understand it entirely. Last time you're like, try it. I'm like, eh, you, you keep that. It's an old, it's an old, <laughs> it's an old thing from Italy, basically. You, know? you grow up with that. The soup, the bread soup of coffee. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's an it's an Italian custom thing, you know. You, you would do put anything in the milk yeah. and coffee. <laughs> you Bread, keep that. Cookies, uh -huh. I'll whatever. I'll stick to my uh, ramen noodles. But anyway, <laughs> um, you know, you looked at me. I was like, "Hey, good morning," and you said, "Look, um, you very you know randomly, you just looked at me and you looked so gone, and you were like, you know, I don't really know what God's plan is here, but if He's gonna take him, like I." Just take him. Like, I, I can't do this. Like, I don't want to see him like this anymore. And I just think that God's going to take him. Like, I think that's what's going to happen. I remember Fabrizio and I were kind of just like, whoa. Like, that was like your first time of ever getting to a place mentally where like, you were like, this is just not going the way we want it to go. Yeah. And, you know, one can argue that that's weakness. But I think the one thing that made Francesco so strong, and I think that was your strength point, was just being like an acceptance of like, 
hmm, this isn't really working. Yeah. This is done. Yeah, because he, he was suffering too much. I too mean, much. At the end, it was horrible. He, you know, I, to me, to see your, your child suffer like that, you just rather, <clears throat> rather not have it. Oh, yeah. So, and I think that they say that there is this this thing of when somebody passes on, but you know, prior to their passing, that they're in so much pain that there's this sense of, in a weird way, relief because you're just, just you can't watch them like that anymore. Yeah. You know how much pain that they were in. Yeah. And I think that there was a part of all of us who were like, just rest. You know, it's like I, we can't see this anymore. Yeah, it was too much. It, it was, was too unbearable. much. Yeah. As much as I didn't want him to go, it was he should have gone. That was it. Because um, and he fought. He fought a lot. Oh. He really... It was insane how much he fought. The day that he passed away, which, worst day of our life, and we don't need to go much into it because we've done our own talks on the side to really understand this day. But there is one moment that I really just want to, you know, understand your thoughts on, which is when I said, hey... He's gone. Oh, he's gone. Yeah. Do you remember that? Of course. What was your first? Just like, no. Like, let me check. You know, yeah. I, maybe not. Mm-hmm. It's kind of just like, let me see. Like, you know, you are, that's why I went to you. Because I'm like, maybe he will know that this is not the truth. Like, you just don't want it to be the truth. Yeah. You see it, but you, you, you're, not, you're not believing it. Yeah. Yeah. When was it when you were just like, I'm going to surrender and accept that this is what it is. That was it at that moment. I mean, there's not that we everything was exhausted no matter what we did. Yeah. It had to be. And that's, you know, I told him, it's, it's okay. You, can... you gave him the okay. He needed your okay. I'm so proud of you for talking to you. No, I really am because yeah. it's so important. I know. You had to go. You had to go. I couldn't see him like that. No. Anymore. No. No one could. It was... He said thank you for your fight. Yeah. He was unbelievable. We all are carrying that strength now to this day. He, yeah. he left us with some serious power. That's true. Because I'm going to tell you something. You guys, and when I say you guys, you know, you and your wife and Fabrizio and myself, like, people fall apart. Like, they stop working. They quit their jobs. They just give up on life. But you guys found a way to just find that, like, I have to keep going. And, like... I guess my question is, how? How Do you have any advice for other parents out there? Because you guys are not the only parents that lost a child. What? How do you wake up every day and do it? Well, it's not easy, but if you let yourself go, and then it's like you he's passed away. It, it, it doesn't mean anything. you got to carry him on. Yeah. you got to keep moving with him. Yeah. He gives you the strength to forward so you know with, with everything you do just like you know in the morning I come down I just get sick of more than but he's still there yeah that's it pass by his room yeah yeah you know a lot of things I mean you know everywhere you turn you see him yeah so you think of like you'll be like in a certain part of the house and you think of like maybe like an old flashback of like yeah, you guys yeah absolutely because that happens to me when I come by even in my own house, you come here all the time. Yeah, of course, of course. When you get into that dark place of like really, because they, they always say it, and I, we know this best at this point. Grief comes in waves. Yeah. So when it hits you, what's like your what do you what is it that you do? Like, do you just like maybe turn the TV on or breathe or like what is a tactic that you use to kind of calm yourself and bring yourself back to center? Well, you know, but you get those moments. I mean, obviously. When you first pass, and then when I went back to work, you know, I just, I was there, but I really wasn't there. Do you think that having that 
task helps to kind of just get out of the house and you know yeah yeah it does a lot you know good um just you know you're out like but you're out in the world but you feel like you're not part of it yeah yet. you know you just you're in your own world regardless but uh you know and then you you know you think of like some of his good times and you know you laugh about it and say it's gonna be okay you know we'll be together again and we also request signs yeah Right? Well, what's going on? Where are <laughs> you? We do it all the time. We're at the house. Like, can you, can you throw something? Cl- shut a door? I don't know. Yeah. Give us something. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, he, he's coming through a few times. Yeah. You know? He plays with your phone. <laughs> he makes phone calls, you know, or his name will show up on my phone. I'm like, I know I didn't call Francesca. Yeah. But it comes up. It comes up. You said that you've done some meditation yourself at work. Like, you'll find some time to sit in yeah, silence. Yeah, in the beginning, I was doing a lot more of it than now. Okay. You lost um, it a little bit. I lost mine as well. I need to go back. And... It did because you know um, it was kind of, kind of, almost getting depressed in there. You know, because I have my own little like office, and I would just shut everything down and just yeah. try and visualize whatever is what. And uh, you know, obviously you burst down in tears, but you move. You know, you, you know I kept trying. You know, just to have some kind of contact. Or, yeah. No. Do you like, for example, when maybe it's Francesco's birthday or his one year of not being here, do you like people acknowledging that to you? Like, hey, I want to reach out to check in. Or would you prefer not really getting those messages? Maybe it resurfaces things. It, sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. Okay. You know? There are times that it's okay. Um, you know, I mean, it's nice because, you know, his friends gather. and Yeah. And it's nice, you know, we all talk about them and this and that so you know it keeps them going you like having the friends over i know you yeah, guys let's yeah, plan something and you know? we do it often i feel we yeah. try it helps to just have that energy no it in the does house. yeah because you know that's the bond that's what yeah. he left us you know but then, and then there are times that you know I'll go you know okay it, it's depending on your mood really yeah you know sometimes you could accept it and you want it and then sometimes like well, you know. something depends on the day yeah yeah basically so do you ever, you know, you're out perhaps and you see a family pass by you with the mom and dad and, next, you know, kids? Mm-hmm. Do you think, like, does that trigger you into what happened to you? No. No, Good. not really. You know? I mean, like you said, I'm not the only one in this boat. There's so many other people, too, that lost their child. But, uh, yeah, it's nice to see when a family and, you know, and the people that do have their family, they should appreciate it yeah you know that's something that i know that you and your wife really say like you know being somebody that's lost their son like at the very least we just want to feel that everybody else is appreciating their kids and appreciating their siblings and because you really don't know what can happen yeah so it really changed your life yeah and i guess now my question to you is what now you know what do you fear the future for yourself do you and this is something by the way that a lot of parents do fear and this doesn't even have to be you lost a son like you know your other son like getting married and you know this idea of just feeling like alone like do you fear loneliness or this change of life no loneliness no not really you know because like i said i mean you have your family around yeah. you and you know your friends and everybody's there when you know, when you need the company. Yeah. Um, but loneliness, no. But like I said, because I know he's always around me anyway. So. Yeah. I really feel that way as well. Like, I you just know? feel, I'm like, am I crazy? But it's like, no, I feel like he just hasn't left. Right. You right. know? No. Like, you feel me, right? Yes. He he, he's, he didn't leave. He's, like, he's always around. It's just that, we unfortunately, you can't touch or feel or... Of course. But I'm sure he's here in this conversation oh, right now. Oh, for sure. He's like, go, Dad. No, he's proud of you because it's hard to talk. No, he's probably pissed off because I'm crying. <laughs> That's true, actually. He's like, come on, man, really? Come on, you're making me look bad, Dad, you know? <laughs> you said um, something really beautiful to me the other day. You said that uh, one day when I get married, you want to walk me down the aisle. If you give me the honor, yes. Why? You're still my daughter. <laughs> you know, I promised myself I wasn't going to cry in this. 
and you were making it so hard. <laughs> no, you were doing amazing. Thank you. And you. <sighs> you're still part of. The... Mm, you're still part of the family, no matter what. You're stuck with us. <laughs> I am so grateful that um. I got the privilege again, like I said in the beginning, to be a part of this family and. Uh, like I said, finally show you guys who I really am. I think that you guys are not the only people that mistaken me, you know, or maybe didn't understand who I was. And a lot of people had a hard time, like, getting past the surface level things to just give me that chance. And I'm just so right, glad right. we got that. And we have this beautiful relationship. And I just want to say that um, I don't know. And you could tell me if this is true, that you fear me disappearing out of your life. But you will always be a part of my life. No, I was actually it never crossed my mind. Good. You I trust me? Yes. I wasn't going to let you go there. <laughs> You're like, I'm going to fight for that. <laughs> I'm going to be there no matter what. Even if you don't want me there. Yeah. I think, you know, when I see you guys, I I think of him. And maybe when you see me. You... Of course. Mm. Absolutely. You think of quiet on the set. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it was part of the world. You, you, you were part of the circle now. You know, that's what he did. Yeah. At least he left us that memory, you know. We have all these beautiful videos now. True. His personality is the T. I know that you guys uh, just downloaded them all to a CD yeah. in case TikTok gets banned and stuff. So I'm really glad that you right. did Right, yeah, of course. Because you never know what these these electronic things, they they do what they want. Play them, they take them off. So you know, at, least, <laughs> at least we have it. Well, um... And you haven't seen so many other videos then I, mean, I know yeah. I want to come over and see like the baby videos yeah. and stuff yeah I gotta I gotta set it up that I gotta portion give it time. of his life I there's didn't so get many. to yeah um I don't think anyone will truly understand us like us with everything that we've been through um and I just wanna <sighs> thank you for just uh the best like 10 years of my life you know like just even when we would have our breakups and I would get texts from you like, just checking in, Kate, how you doing? Yeah, and I'd be like, mm-hmm, <laughs> the parents still love me. If he tries to get another girlfriend, good luck. No, we won't let it happen. <laughs> I really, um, I I'm just... checked up. You know that. Yeah. Because I know you guys used to have your spats here and there and it's like, let it go, just go. <laughs> and you just couldn't. I know, oh my God. Do you remember how many times? Yeah. You're like, just let it go. He's like, shut up over there. <laughs> you are not involved. I'm true. like, hey, listen to your father. You do. Shh. I'm like, <laughs> all right. No, uh, Joe, it's it's an honor. And I, again, I'm just so proud of you for being so brave and talking today. Thank you for trusting me with just everything, you know, giving me the courage to even make this podcast and just trusting me with your son and just. Absolutely. I really no, just thank you for making him so happy. <laughs> 